Okay, I'm gonna do the entire video balancing these on one finger. Never mind. Hey, what is going on guys? So today I thought I would do another book recommendation video, but I do want to tell you up front that this is a little bit different than my previous book recommendation video, which was all about books I think that every student should read. By contrast, this is a list of the best books that I personally read this year. So while every book on this list is educational and I found to be very useful, I'm not necessarily going to say that you have to read this book if you're a student, but I do think that you'll find a lot of the books on this list interesting no matter who you are. Case in point, the first book on my list is The Codebook by Simon Singh. Now, this is a book that teaches you all about the history and the ins and outs of cryptography, the science of encoding and decoding messages. The book basically gives you a comprehensive overview of this topic, and it starts all the way back in Roman times and goes over Caesar ciphers and monoalphabetic substitution ciphers, moves on to polyalphabetic substitution ciphers, and then goes into the modern day and covers things like Diffie-Hellman key exchange and public-private key cryptography, and even quantum cryptography. Now, the book is lacking a little bit in practical details about how to secure your online life, though we did do a podcast episode all about that that you can check out in the description down below, but it is an absolutely fascinating read and I could not put it down once I started reading it. Second on my list is Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less by Greg McCune. And we did have to look up how to pronounce that on Forvo before making this video, so I'm pretty sure I have that right, but if you're Irish, then you can correct me. That is an Irish name, right? No idea. Boy, now I have to look also, at it. one of them said McKeown. This book talks all about how to prioritize the most important things that you're doing in your life and focus on those things, how to work without distraction. And this book was really important for me because as an entrepreneur and a creative person, I get a ton of ideas. And if I don't keep my mind restrained a little bit, I'm easily able to just go off and get distracted on a new idea before finishing something that I'm already working on. So reading this book really shifted my mindset and made me take single-minded focus on an important task a lot more seriously than I had in the past. And this was one book that we did talk about on the podcast, so if you want an overview or a summary of it, I'll have that link in the description down below. The third book on my list is a big one. Debt the First 5,000 Years by David Graeber was a fascinating read, and admittedly, I'm actually not done with this book yet, but I am about halfway through, and it is really, really interesting if you have any sort of inclination towards reading about economics. I actually heard about this book back when I watched the money episode of the Crash Course World History series with John Green, and the idea that explores is really fascinating. Basically, in classical economics, they teach this idea that before money, there was barter. Basically, before you had coins to trade with, you took your cow to the market and you lopped off part of its leg and you traded that for some rice. But the thing is, while this theory is taught in most intro to economics textbooks, anthropologists have found almost no record of any society that ever used pure barter before the development of money. Instead, they used informal debt bonds, which eventually became formalized by the development of money and IOUs and banking and so forth. Anyway, again, this is not the kind of book that's gonna help you balance your own checkbook or save more money efficiently, but it is a fascinating introduction into how economics really works. Next up on my list is the Elon Musk biography by Ashley Vance. And you may have seen this one coming since I did make an Elon Musk video pretty recently. I've been getting more and more into reading biographies. In the past couple of years, I've read biographies on Jeff Bezos, on Steve Jobs, and on Elon Musk. And I have to say the one on Elon Musk inspired me the most, and I came away with more respect for him than I did for the other two. Obviously, all three of these men are, or were, wildly successful, and they all definitely had glaring flaws that I don't want to emulate. But out of the three, I came away with the feeling that Elon Musk has this just driving motivation to improve humanity as a whole. That's the reason I made my video on Musk in the first place. And listening to his biography, because this is one that I did listen to as an audiobook, was really motivating for me. It made me want to put more effort into my own work. Book number five on my list is The Big Short by Michael Lewis. Now, if you've seen any of my conversations with my friend Taha on Twitter, you will know that The Big Short is my favorite movie of all time. And earlier this year, after watching the movie for probably the third time, I decided it was high time that I actually read the book that it was based on. And this book is an excellent overview of exactly why the financial crisis of 2008 happened. So if you have any interest in recent history and economics and why the markets all crashed the way they did and how corrupt the system really was, this book is a fascinating read. And it's honestly a lot of fun to read as well, though it will probably also make you mad. All right, book number six on my list is How to Not Be Wrong, The Power of Mathematical Thinking by Jordan Ellenberg. Like the title implies, this is a book about math. But before you go clicking out of this video, if you don't like math, it is not a math book. You're not gonna have to work on problems. It is a simple introduction to certain math concepts. In fact, he has one page that teaches you calculus in one page, at least the fundamental concepts of it. And moreover, this book spends a lot of time talking about statistics and how statistics are misinterpreted or misused by the media or by people who have an agenda 
agenda to further. So by reading this book, even if you don't go pick up a math minor at university or study the concepts further, it is going to give you a more intuitive understanding of statistics and you're gonna be able to more accurately interpret the ones you see in your everyday life. Book number seven on my list is The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. And this is another book that we covered on the podcast this year. And it is probably the best book I have ever read for when you are struggling with procrastination. This book is basically a meditation on the work of an artist, the daily consistent work put in over years and years. It deals a lot with the concept of resistance and how to defeat it. And honestly, if you have a lot of trouble putting in consistent daily work into things that you're striving to do, this is a really good read. Book number eight on my list is Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. And I picked this book up because as you might've heard in my previous video, I have been really into cooking recently. Now this book, while wildly entertaining, is not a how-to on the science of cooking. There actually is a book called The Science of Cooking, which I also picked up, but I am not done with yet. But this book is more of an expose on the life of a professional cook. And if you've ever watched any of Anthony Bourdain's TV shows before, you will know that he is an incredibly entertaining guy and that definitely transfers over to his writing. Now, I will say that this book did teach me a couple of things, which is why it's on this list. If it was just entertaining, I probably wouldn't have put it on there. It actually has a chapter that talks about why restaurant food tastes different than the food you make at home. And he also talks a little bit about some of the basic tools that you can add to your kitchen to be a better cook yourself. But for the most part, the book is mainly full of stories of Bourdain's time as a cook and eventually a chef. And because it's Anthony Bourdain and because he does narrate the audiobook, I highly recommend listening to it rather than reading it. And finally, the ninth book on my list is Good to Great by Jim Collins. And this book was really useful to me as an entrepreneur because it's all about how companies go from good or mediocre to great. The entire book is based on a five-year long study that looked at data from hundreds of different companies and identified the ones that spent a really long time in the mediocre zone and then finally had a transition point to greatness that was sustained. And I took a lot of lessons away from this book that I tried to apply to my own work and to my own company, but one of the most important was the concept of level five leadership. The book explains that a level five leader is somebody who embodies two incredibly important characteristics. First, they have an indomitable will and work ethic. They're willing to put in whatever it takes to further the goals of the company. But at the exact same time, they are humble. They live by that excellent quote from Harry Truman. It's amazing what you can accomplish if you do not care who gets the credit. And after I read that, I took that to heart. I realized that I run a business where my face is basically on everything, but there are a lot of elements that I have been able to let go that have actually improved because I've done that. So guys, that is my list of the best books that I read this year. And I would love to hear from you. What are the best books that you read this year? Let me know down in the comments. I'll also have all these books linked in the description below so you can check them out if you want. And for the ones that we did happen to analyze on the podcast, I will have links to those podcast episodes as well. Beyond that, if you enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up and you can also subscribe right there if you want to get notified when I publish new videos. And you can also click right there if you want to get a free copy of my book on how to earn better grades. You can also find our latest podcast episode right there where we recapped 2017 and kind of did a little year in review. And if you want to find one more video on this channel, click right there. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.